Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to undertake a single sample t-test, or more importantly, a one-tailed version of a single sample t-test. Okay. And like in the previous uh, videos that we had in relation to single sample testing, uh, the particular scenario uh, has been taken from the classic text by Bernstein and Levine, uh, Business Statistics. It's chapter 9, it's self-test uh, self uh, exercise 9.56. And this particular scenario uh, tells us in relation to a particular restaurant or a fast food franchise and in relation to the mean waiting time at the drive through window uh, as measured from the time a customer places an order until the customer receives the order. Uh, and what we have is you are the manager of a restaurant for a fast food franchise. Last month the mean waiting time at the drive through window as measured from the time a customer places an order until the time the customer receives the order was 3.7 minutes. Okay. So this is like the status quo. You know that this was the average waiting time in the past. Okay. So the franchise helped you institute a new process. Don't forget you're the manager. Okay. The franchise helped you institute a new process and it was intended uh, that this process would help to reduce waiting times. And you want to try to prove uh, whether your waiting time has changed in any way. So what you do is you select a random sample of 64 orders. Okay. You find that the sample mean waiting time for these 64 orders was 3.57 minutes. And the associated sample standard deviation was 0 0.8 minutes. Okay. And the question that's been asked here is this, is at the 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence that the population mean waiting time is now less than 3.7 minutes? Okay. And this is the most important thing. The question is asking us, is there evidence that the population mean waiting time is now less than, less than 3.7 minutes? Okay. But like all of our hypothesis tests previously, there's a five-step uh, procedure. Uh, step one is where we define our hypothesis. Okay? Our hypothesis has two positions. It has a null position and it has an alternative position. Uh, the alternative position is always what we're going to try to prove. In this case, the question is, is there evidence that the population mean waiting time is now less than 3.7 minutes? So the alternative is, can we show that the population waiting time is less than 3.7 minutes? In which case, the null position must be the opposite of this, or what's left over, is the null position must be that the population waiting time is greater than or equal to 3.7 minutes. Okay. Now, because the alternative has a specific direction associated with it, this is known as a one-tail test. And the, I suppose, the less than sign in this case is pointing in the direction of where our evidence needs to reside, okay? It's a left tail test. So for us to reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative, the evidence must be significantly out to the left hand side of 3.7. Okay, so we've defined our hypothesis. Uh, part two is we set our significance level which is going to be given in our scenarios, or you choose your significance level before you often do your experiment. Okay? So the significance level is, well, it's at the 0 0.05 level of significance. So our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. What we're really saying is because it's a left tail test, we're putting 0 0.05 of the area in the left tail. Okay. Uh, step three is to calculate our test statistic. So our test statistic, Okay. Well, we're doing a t-test, so t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n, where x bar is the sample mean, n is the sample size, s is the sample standard deviation, and mu is the hypothesized position of our distribution under the null hypothesis. It's what we assume to be true, or the center of our distribution under this particular assumption. Okay, so let's calculate all of our sample values, our sample statistics. So we know that our sample is of size 64, so n is equal to 64. We know that the average waiting time 
sample mean waiting time is 3.57 so x bar is 3.57 uh, and we know that the standard deviation or the sample standard deviation is 0 0.8 so s is equal to 0 0.8 okay so that means our test statistic t is equal to x bar our sample mean which is 3.57 minus our hypothesized center of our distribution which under the null hypothesis is going to be 3.7 okay and that's to be divided by s our standard deviation which is 0 0.8 which needs to be divided by the square root of our sample size, which is the square root of 64. Now, when I do this on the calculator, what we end up with is we end up with 3.57 minus 3.7 gives us a value of minus 0 0.13. I'm going to divide that by 0 0.8. Okay, gives us a value of minus 0 0.16. And I'm going to multiply that by the square root of 64 to give me a test statistic of minus 1.3. So what we know is that the evidence is 1.3 standard units away from the mean. And the negative sign means that the evidence is in the left-hand tail. Okay, so now that's our first stage, or that's our test statistic calculated. The next stage is to figure out our critical values. Step four is our critical our critical values, our critical regions, our rejection regions. Uh, our distribution is a T distribution centered on zero. Okay. Don't forget we normalize here. Our critical values, this is a one tail test because our arrow is pointing in the direction of the tail. We want to show that there's evidence to suggest that the mean waiting time is less than 3.7 minutes. Okay. Uh, so we have a left tail test over here it's a one tail test uh, so our significance is alpha is equal to 0 0.05 okay so we need to figure out what that critical value is here now true symmetry that critical value will be rotate okay? that critical value would be the same as a critical value that's on the right hand side okay that's the same distance away from zero on the right hand side over here okay but that would have 0 0.05 of the area in the right hand tail uh, so we go to our t distribution tables our t distribution tables our degrees of freedom are listed down here our degrees of freedom don't forget is degrees of freedom is n minus one our sample size minus one <coughs> which is 64 minus one which gives us a value of 63 okay now on our tables we don't have 63 but what we do have is 60 and 70 okay uh, at 60 our degrees of freedom when we have 0 0.05 of the area in the right hand in the left hand tail our degrees of freedom at 60 is 1.671 so at 0 0.05 we have 1.671 <coughs> and at 70 we have 1.667 at 70 we have 1.667 okay now for our purposes 63 degrees of freedom is closer to 60 so we'll take this particular this particular uh, critical value as our critical value okay so our c is equal to is equal to in this case because of symmetry it's minus 1.667 okay so now the question is, is our test statistic in our rejection region? Okay, so let's just have a look at it in a little bit more detail. Let's just blow this up a bit. Okay, so our distribution is centered on zero. Our critical region is demarcated. Don't forget, we have alpha is equal to 0 0.05 of the area in this tail. This particular value here is minus 1.667. Our test statistic t is minus 1.3 so our test statistic t is minus 1.3 okay which doesn't fall in our rejection region okay actually what we're saying is that our test statistic is is still too close to our hypothesized center of our distribution yeah for it to be significantly different to it okay so our decision step five is our decision okay uh, now 
if we throw away the science, I'm going to just have a look at the absolute values, yeah, I mean, uh, what we need to show here is that our t value, yeah, is, to reject, we need to show that our t value is less than our critical value, okay, this is our critical value, in this case we haven't shown it, okay, uh, so, but first to reject from a, when we, when we rotate this around, we still have to show that the positive t value is bigger than the positive c value, so our decision, okay, uh, is clearly the absolute value of our t is not bigger than the absolute value of our c and what we mean by that is 1.3 is not bigger than 1.667 and as such and as such okay we fail to reject h0 in favor in favor of ha Okay, at the five percent significance level. Okay, uh, in our context here, so we've we failed to reject. Okay, so in our context here, really, what we're saying is that there is insufficient evidence to suggest that the population mean waiting time is now less than three point seven minutes. Okay. So guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, just running through a single sample t-test, a one-tailed version, or more importantly, a left-tail single sample t-test. Okay. So guys, once again, thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Okay,